Well, welcome to this session of RD Works Learning Lab. Um, today we're going to try and unravel the mysteries of this rotary device. So I've unplugged the Y axis and plugged this unit into the Y axis socket. There are many ways that this unit can be used, um, and I suspect there's only one that is correct. I'm holding it this way. <coughs> There's no reason why it couldn't be that way, or that way, because it's completely symmetrical, or that way, or that way. So we've got at least eight combinations there that we could use. But I've chosen initially to put the motor up here, shortest distance away from its plug. You'll notice that I have placed it across the machine like this as my first choice. Now I'm going to put a piece of steel tube on here to start with, although we're not going to cut steel tube, um, but this is just for demonstration purposes to show you how we have to think about this before we even go into programming. Because I've disconnected this y-axis no longer moves under power, we're going to get these rollers to move under power instead. My first question, and this is not the first time I've done this, I have spent quite a long time trying to learn out how to use this because the instructions are nil and the help that's available out there in the big www is very very limited. Hopefully the distillation of all my experience will make things a lot easier for you guys when you get one of these or try and use one of these tables. So now that we've disconnected the y-axis um, we've got this free floating but we have still got programmed control of the actual x-axis itself but the y-axis is now taken over by these theta rotations the rotary movement caused by this table let's have a look at what we're going to do when we write a program how is the program going to work now i've got my left right up and down arrows here for driving the axes around independently so if i press the left arrow the head moves left. If I press the right arrow, the head moves right. When I do the up arrow, previously, the head would have moved backwards. And when I press the down arrow, the head will have moved forwards. But look what happens this time. We're pressing the up arrow. It looks as though the work is moving forwards. By pressing the up arrow, what effectively has happened is I'm moving the head up or away from me as in the direction of the arrow on the keyboard. So what I'm saying to you is if I turn this unit over or round in some way shape or form it will not perform the same as the arrows on the keyboard. The arrows on the keyboard if you press the down arrow it seems to go the wrong way but in fact it's not going the wrong way it's going the correct way for a y-axis movement. That's confusion number one which we need to deal with. And then confusion number two, remember back to when we were doing bitmaps, um, this pattern was laying on the table like this and our x-axis was scanning across this way. Now if we want to use the same picture the chances are we would want to use that picture this way but the scan lines would no longer go this way because the scan lines are done by this x-axis. So our scan lines will now go up and down this way and our y-axis is going to generate the pattern by gradually moving around this way. So we'll be scanning at 90 degrees. So what we've got to remember is when we generate a, a pro, our program now, we've got to remember that the program needs to be rotated by 90 degrees to what we've been working with so far. I don't think we need to go much further into the machine at the moment because we've covered the two basic things that we need to understand before we start writing our program. We'll come back to the machine shortly when we've got a program written and we'll find out how this all translates into reality. Well, as I mentioned, this piece of steel pipe that I've got on here, uh, I shall be using it later but not for cutting. We need to find something that most of you guys will have kicking around in your workshop an empty tape reel it could be a toilet roll or you could have a cardboard tube like this which could be a, a postal tube whatever you do don't be tempted 
to use something like this, which is a piece of drainage pipe, because this is a PVC type pipe and no, it produces nasty fumes, as we've mentioned in some other sessions. What we're going to try and achieve in this session is something like this. That's the aim of our exercise today, to finish up making that. Let's start off by drawing a rectangle. And then we'll put some text in here. So we'll try and choose a nice bold font, something like Cooper Black. Okay, and we'll set our um, height on the font to something like maybe 20 millimeters. And I think for convenience purposes, we'll use all uppercase. When we take a look here, you'll see that some of these letters like the H and the I are extremely close together. So I think we will go into the text again with a double click and we'll change the width, we'll the character spacing to something like maybe one millimeter. Let's see whether we can see what that looks like. That looks better. Okay, so we've got some separation here now between the I and the H and just check that everything else looks pretty good and we're not touching. So we'll put this approximately in the middle there. So in this sentence, I'm going to put a little bit of a twist in it. Now, if I double click on the letter itself, you can see it reverts me back to edit the text, which I don't want. But if I double click on the center point, click, click, I get my rotation handles as opposed to coming up here and setting it to an exact um, angle. So I can make this do what I want approximately by eye. Now we'll put a, a marquee around the whole lot so that everything happens together. And then we'll lock the aspect ratio and then we'll change the overall dimension to 150 millimeters long, 150 millimeters long, and that will proportionately shrink everything down. I'm also going to put a line over the top. I'm going to put a line there and a line there. Now those two lines are 150 millimeters apart. We have to make a decision at this point what we want to do with this writing. And in fact, what I'd like to do is to make sure that the letters cut and fall out. So I know that the A and the O and the R will have the little bits missing out in the middle, but that's uh, not a problem at the moment. What we need to do is separate out this outer rectangle and we'll put that onto a red layer. I want to cut these lines on the end and I want to cut the text. So we want to make sure that this layer here which is a red layer, is actually only a reference layer. So is it an output? No, we don't want to cut that at all. So now we want to set some parameters for the black layer. Output, yes, we don't want to output. And is it blowing? I don't think it really matters. Process mode, we definitely want it to be cut. Power, who knows? Let's this thin card, but let's say 80 and 80 will do me nicely. Speed, uh, maybe we'll pull that down to about 20. The problem will be in the Y axis, we don't want things to move too quickly because we've got this rotational inertia problem going on. Whether or not the relationship between the rollers and the cylinder that we're putting on there will change because of slippage. I don't know. I don't know how repeatable this system is. That's what we'll find out when we do the test. Normally in Y we'd be setting up a line spacing of some sort, but we don't have that option here. So I have to say, this is not the first program I've tried to write. And when I first started with all the information that was around, I finished up going up here to the second tab along, which says output. 
and it clearly says up here enable rotate engrave and it gives me the opportunity of setting a diameter for the tube all I can say is don't because it doesn't work although it's obvious that that's what you should do and I failed until I realized that I shouldn't be ticking this rotary engrave enable which is somewhat counterintuitive okay so there's a test my screen has some problems showing the preview um, function up here but I have just tested it and it shows that line that and then that line working perfectly okay so I think we're good to go except this is our tube axis and the question is do we want this to run along the tube or round the tube well if we're trying to copy what I was trying to do we want to run round the tube so what we need to do is to pick this whole thing up with a marquee and up here accurately specify that we need minus 90 degrees of rotation and then we delete this line so we'll tuck it up in the corner there and we will then save this and then we will output the file to a memory stick. Well here we are back at the machine. Um, we need to have these rollers set up dead parallel to this x-axis here. There are several ways that you can do that. I mean when I say dead parallel within a maybe half a mil or millimetre or so you could either use something like the back edge of these slots along here to set your frame up. There we go. So I've now lined up the edge of the slots with the edge of that frame. That's one way you can do it. The other way would be to push it back and feel it so that it lines up with the back edge of the table on both ends. That's another way of doing it. It doesn't matter which way you do it but in essence what you're trying to do is to make sure that these are set up parallel to the x-axis, the head movement. When the, uh, when the y-axis was connected up um, the head would move around and it would find a zero position over this corner. Um, so let's have a quick look at what happens now that we've disconnected the y-axis. I'll turn on the power. And x is going away to find its zero position. And you'll notice that the rollers here are busy rotating. And for convenience, I'll just put that on there so you can see rotation happening. It's now running backwards very slowly to try and find a zero position. Now one has to assume that there's some sort of datum plate inside the stepper motor here that's zero and that's what it's trying to find but it's doing it very slowly so that it doesn't miss it. It comes in from one direction only. And it takes something like about 30 seconds to find this zero point. So it's now found the zero and it jumped back because with my up down arrows I've got this set to approximately halfway into the motion of the slides. So let's just run the slide. I'm going to use the up arrow at the moment and I'm going to run the slide, run the rollers until they stop. Effectively what I've just done has driven the table, the x-axis, fully backwards. I'll put a mark on here and now I'll drive the table, not the table anymore, but this rotary axis to its other extent. So that's one revolution <coughs> and a bit. So that's about one and a quarter revolutions. That's what we've got to play with. When we wrote our program there was a, a little green square at the top left hand corner of the program and that actually represents program 00, zero. and if you remember correctly all of our um, drawing was below that green 00, zero. now that's the 00, zero for the program so we know that if we were to put the y-axis fully to the top of its stroke with the up arrow we'll only be working down away from that point and we shall have a maximum of one and a quarter revolutions um, to work with. So we shouldn't actually run into the end stop at all.